Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be never brag about yourself. Well, I've got a short email here from a guy, and he brings up some interesting points that I haven't talked about in a while. And kind of the tone I see, not only of some things that he mentions, but also that the girl that he was seeing mentions is that he seems to place a big emphasis on money and talking about things and what he has and the successes that he has. Now it's important to be a good listener when you go out on dates because some guy, guys who talk about how much money they have or how much success they have or all of their accomplishments, usually you're doing that because they're trying to make up for the fact that they feel insecure on the inside. In other words, they don't think they're good enough to have what they really want so they think by talking about all their successes and their accomplishments that women will go, oh, you're so successful and you're so rich and you're so – oh, it's just so amazing. And The only kind of women you're going to attract when you act that way are shallow women that are just looking for a guy to pay their bills. It's just not a good way to go. Plus you go out on a date and you start talking about yourself and all your accomplishments and never asking any questions and never being a good listener – the woman starts to think this guy is selfish, self-absorbed or she realizes, wow, this guy is just really insecure about himself and so he tends to talk about all of his accomplishments. I had a, a good buddy of mine who I really liked hanging out with when I was in my 20s. He was a pretty successful guy and he was always talking about his Porsche. He had gotten an older Porsche and he had detailed it and renovated it. He, he designed a custom fuel injection system for it himself. He worked in the, the car industry. And this was a beautiful car that he had. The thing was like 15 years old, but it looked spotless. It was really kick ass. And he was always talking about his Porsche. He was always talking about how much money he had and how successful he was and how pretty the girl was that he was going out with. And it was just constant, a constant barrage about his things and his material wealth. And all of us, all of, all of us guys that were his friends, we loved him. We thought he was a great guy. But it's like after a while, you just get sick of just – it's like constant – my Porsche this, my Porsche that and so and so thought I was really cool because of this Porsche and because I'm so successful and have all this money and, blah, blah. and he really didn't make a lot of money but he talked like he was a multimillionaire or something and the bottom line is I think he was only making sixty or $70,000 a year and this was back in the 90s. Not that that's not a lot of money but he talked like he was a multimillionaire and he wasn't. He was renting his own apartment. He had a really nice car. But other than that, it's just you know, after a while you get older and like you know I haven't talked to the guy in a lot of years, but it, you know he was fun to hang out with. But after a while you get just sick of that because I would introduce some other friends of mine, and within five minutes he's talking about his car and how much money he has and how successful he is and buying. And, just, and people are like, this guy's really fucking shallow. I'm like he's a great guy, but you know he's always talking about himself all the time, and it just it's a fucking turn off. So I got a quote that I wrote in this particular topic. And then we're going to go through his email. And the quote says, Successful men who have a healthy self-esteem are happy to talk about their accomplishments and successes when asked. Men who are insecure, who have self-esteem issues or who are needy, desperate or unsuccessful feel they lack something on the inside that would make them desirable to other people. Therefore, in order to be liked by others or women they are attracted to, they try to make up for what they feel they lack on the inside by bragging about themselves or their accomplishments, talking about how much money they have, talking about material things that they own or talking about things that they can offer the other person. They also tend to be terrible listeners because they are so focused on gaining the love or approval of others that they feel they must dominate all conversations by talking about themselves constantly. Women who initially like them quickly get turned off and lose interest. Taking a sincere interest in other people, asking questions and being a good listener will always win you friends, enable you to influence others and attract women. Let's go ahead and go through his email. He says, hey Corey, as with most of your clients, I found you after this issue arose and the information hunt had begun. He says, I recently met a girl and we kicked it off right away. In the beginning, she would want to see me each day and constantly was texting me. And after exploring your materials, allowing this to happen is a fatal mistake. The key, there's not so much texting is a problem. It's when you get in the habit of just constantly texting and talking on the phone but you never get together in person. And you basically become her therapist or her emotional 
tampon or a gay male girlfriend and then when you try to ask her out on a date, she's always busy because you pretty much told her everything that was going on in your life up until that point. The phone is for setting dates. I mean obviously some, there's going to be some cases maybe you get involved in a long distance relationship but when you're in long distance with somebody and you can't physically be together in person, <clears throat> then what you're going to do is make Skype video dates or FaceTime dates. We can actually see the person even maybe have a meal together or have some wine or have some tea or whatever together. He says she was also constantly telling all her friends how great of a guy I am and how lucky she is. Well, that's obviously how she felt in the beginning. But if it had stayed that way, obviously we wouldn't be reading his email. He says, then I made the ultimate mistake of demasculizing myself by buying her nice things and we were going out, I would cover all the expenses. So you like to throw money around. And notice what he says. To me, this is no big deal. He puts in big bold letters. Since money is not a concern. <clears throat> so that tells me that you're basically trying to bribe her with the fact that you can throw money around and spend money on her. It's a bad way to go. He says, my intention was never to buy or bribe her for love. Well, it's obvious that that became a problem for you. Besides, you should only be buying things for your girlfriend, not somebody that you're just kind of casually dating or just met. He says the trouble begins when she was moving out and at the same time I was moving to a different apartment as well. She was renting a room from her best friend which is also a guy. He's a guy who developed something called Wednesday Bestie Dates and would constantly bombard her Facebook with pictures of him and her going on their dates which annoyed me to no end and all of her friends asked her, how does so and so feel about this? Meaning the guy that wrote the email to me. So she asked me and I just simply said, I have no say in this. However, if I was your boyfriend, I wouldn't be happy with this. Well, if you guys are dating and she asks you, I say, well, quite frankly, it looks like you're dating your roommate or that you're hooking up with your roommate. And I know you and I are dating, so it's kind of not cool. And if we were exclusive, that would definitely not be cool. He says, during the move, I helped her with everything, making myself available even to paint her room, thinking it's a bonding thing to do. So you basically became her manservant. And on top of that, you were buying her expensive gifts, maybe giving her money. I mean, God knows what was going on. I've seen guys do lots of crazy things. I've, had, I've, I've talked to guys that have given women twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to somebody they just went out with a few times. And they're just like, oh, you need help with those bills? Here's ten grand." And then... They can't seem to get her to pay it back. Hmm. He says, in the beginning, we were hanging out with her friends and family and they are all middle, middle income people and they said that they want this and they want that. And since I'm a self-made man, I would say some stuff such as, you can have that. It's no big deal. Just work hard and earn it. This continued for another week or two. Then we had dinner and over dinner, she told me that I and her – I annoyed her and her friends with my comments about their financial situations and that not everyone is you. So th I see a pattern here of you talking about your money and how you're awesome and you're so successful. But sometimes you're going to be around people that don't have as much money as you or they're not as successful as you and you're just going to be jealous and envious. That could also be it as well. But the point that you've talked about how money was no big deal to you and that you were buying her lots of expensive gifts and, and throwing money around and the fact that you're getting around her friends and talking about finance and the fact that you're mentioning that they're all middle income people. Obviously, it sounds like you offended a lot of them. He says, then I and then proceeded to say something to the degree of, after two months of hanging out, I don't think we can go any further and she basically friend zoned me and perhaps much worse. What should I do at this point? She still constantly likes my status on Facebook and my pictures on Instagram. Should I like her images and statuses as well? Absolutely not. She ditched you. She blew you off. And you know she appreciated you buying her all these gifts and all these expensive dinners and things so much that she stuck you in friend zone. So that tells me you spent a little too much time chit-chatting on the phone, not enough time going out on dates. And plus you weren't even exclusive yet. You're painting her house. You're hanging out with – her friends and her family and the bottom line is in the beginning until she's head over heels in love with you and you're in an exclusive relationship your dates really should just involve the two of you 
Now, once she's head over heels in love with you and she wants to introduce every, you to every one of her friends, hey, this is my boyfriend so-and-so, really the dates just need to be between the two of you so you can get to know each other. But you just made a lot, a lot of rookie mistakes, bribing her for sex, talking about money, obviously around her and around her friends. It's obviously they, they – you made them feel kind of inferior. Plus, it looks like you made yourself look like you were a little shallow in the fact that you're constantly focusing on money and what you have and who you are and what you can do for other people. And it's just a bad way to go. You really just want to create an opportunity for sex to happen. You want to hang out, have fun, hook up, not be talking about yourself all the time. Let her do most of the talking. She reaches out, assumes she wants to see you, and make a date. But again, way too much texting on the phone and you already have noticed that by the comments that you made in the email and at this point there's really nothing you can do the strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it and so she didn't value you anymore romantically and so she puts you in friend zone well that's not what you wanted you wanted romance sex and romance but instead you basically became the friend so you walk and you never look back. If she ever reaches out to you again, assume she wants to see you and make a date at your place. Make her come to you for the first two to three dates. She ended the courtship. She put you in friend zone. Therefore, the only way you're going to spend any of your valuable time with her is if she comes to you. Therefore, if she reaches out, assume she wants to see you and make a date. Tell her to come on over and you'll make dinner together. And if she doesn't want to do that, say, you know, it's just been a long week. I'm in the, just in the mood to hang at my place. If you don't want to come over and hang out and make dinner together and have a nice quiet evening and catch up, then you know what? Give me a call in two to three weeks and maybe I'll be up for something more formal then. And so if she calls you on two separate occasions and you ask her that and she gives you the same thing, oh, well, let's go out. Let's, why don't you pick me up? Just say, nah, I'm just in the mood to hang. And if after two times of her reaching out, she still won't come over, then don't ask her anymore. If she reaches out, say she calls you three weeks, the third time, talk to her for two or three minutes or send two to three texts back and forth max and just always in it the same way. Say, hey, it was great hearing from you, but I got to run, keep in touch. And she'll do one of two things. She'll either bring up getting together or she'll stop calling. That's the best way to handle it when a woman has friend zoned you where, th- you know, in the beginning, she's like, I'm so lucky to have you. You're so awesome. But after two months, she's like, I don't see it going any further. You know what? Let's just be friends. I don't think so. I'm not interested in that. But give me a call if you change your mind. And then you walk and you never look back. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.